Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, Phase 1 has updated Capture 121 to version 14.3. Hope that made sense. In this new version of Capture One is a new brush. It's called the Magic Brush. And the Magic Brush allows you to very quickly and easily add a mask to your image. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use it. Now, first of all, the Magic Brush is found in two different areas of Capture 121. Over here in the Layers tab, it's right here at the bottom. You can see that's the Magic Brush. Also up here in the Tool Well, right here is the Magic Brush. If you long press with the left mouse button, you can see right there, Magic Brush, keyboard shortcut of B. Just make sure you're using the Magic Brush. And I mentioned it allows you to quickly and easily add a mask to your image. Now, for example, on this image, let's say I wanted to mask the sky because I want to do adjustments only to the sky. I don't have to get a brush, laboriously brush the sky, make sure I don't touch the water and, or get on those trees at all. Instead, with the magic brush, I just do a small brush stroke across the sky. It looks at where I brushed, it looks at the color and tone, and then it will apply a mask everywhere in the image that is of similar color and tone. So it's a real time saver. Now, there are some brush settings. If you right click on the image with the magic brush active, you'll see their size and opacity. Those are pretty much self-explanatory. Then you have tolerance, refine edge, and then you have a checkbox, sample entire photo. I'm gonna come back to sample entire photo and I'm gonna come back to refine edge. Let's talk about tolerance. Now I mentioned when you brush across your image, it looks at the color and tone. If you have that tolerance slider far to the left, it's only going to draw the mask at very, very similar color and tone. On the other hand, if you have this slider more to the right, and for lack of a better term, it's going to be a little more sloppy. It's going to draw the mask on color and tone that isn't exactly the same color and tone you brushed on. So the tolerance slider is probably going to be going to change from image to image that you work on. Now, to reset any slider to its default position, just double click right on it. I'm sorry, double click on it, and then it will reset it back to its default position. Now for this image, I don't want to mask the sky. I want to mask the beach. I want to add some adjustments just to the sand. Now to use the magic brush properly, first get a magic brush. Next, make sure that the mask is on. Go up here, click right here, and see where it says always display mask. Make sure there's a check mark there. Keyboard shortcut is M. You could toggle that off and on. Then what you do, is once you have the magic brush active, just get your brush. You could right click at the right size with that slider or use the bracket keys, right bracket key larger, left bracket key smaller. And I mentioned here, let's zoom right out because I accidentally zoomed in. Just do a small brush stroke across the beach and it will calculate. It may take a second depending on your computer speed. It may take a longer than mine. It may take shorter. It depends on how many pixels your image is also. But you can see it pretty much masked out the beach pretty well. It didn't touch any of the sky. It did get a little bit of the water and a little bit of the bird. So what I could do is I could go in and get this eraser tool right here and just erase it from where the bird is and where the water is. If it didn't get somewhere that I wanted to get, I could also just get the regular brush over here and I could add it. So you could use those, the eraser and the regular brush, to add or subtract from your mask after you use the magic brush. And then once you have it ready to go, like you're satisfied with the mask, turn it off by hitting the M key, turn off the mask overlay. So you're not seeing that. And then you could come in and do your adjustments. Let's say for this, I want to bring exposure down a little bit and I want to add some clarity and some texture and let's some saturation. And you can see that it does it on its own layer right here. So I could turn it off, there's before. And there's after. And you can see how it's just applying it to the beach. So the magic brush is a real time saver. Now let's talk about some of these other adjustments. Let's go to this other image here. Let's turn the mask on, the mask overlay on, hit the M key. All right, right click again and let's talk about sample entire photo. First, let's leave that off and let me show you something. I'm going to just draw across the sky here and let it calculate the mask. Again, depending on the megapixels of your image, the speed of your computer it may go fast, it may go slow just got to be patient. Notice what it did though. It masked the sky perfectly, but it didn't get in between the panes of glass of the lighthouse and it stopped at the break wall out here in the lake. So it didn't get any of the water down here, even though the water has some similar tone there. What that checkbox does is if you have it checked, 
all right? And let me undo this by hitting Command Z. So you have it checked. What will happen is I'll draw the same kind of line I drew a second ago. It will not stop at those hard breaks like the, the um, edges between the panes of glass or the break wall. It will look at the entire photo and draw the mask now in this case on the water. Now for this image, I probably didn't want that checked, right? So I'm going to undo that, hit Command Z, and then I'm Control Z on a PC, Command Z on a Mac. I'm going to right click, I'm going to make sure that's off. Let's just do this image real quick. I'll draw right here and let it do its thing. Now, the magic brush is additive. I could get the regular brush and try to brush in between these panes, but the magic brush is additive. So I could get a smaller brush like this, a real small brush, and come in here and then just paint between the panes and add to my basically selection. Now, I'm not going to painstakingly do this in this video because you get the idea. I'm just going to hit the M key to turn the mask off. And then for this image, I don't know what I want to do. Let me bring brightness down. Maybe add a lot of clarity and add a lot of texture. Maybe add even some saturation a little bit. Okay, so you can see how that magic brush allowed me to mask that sky so I could do that to it. Now, I don't like what I did, but you get the hopefully get the idea of what I was going for there. Now, let's talk about this last setting. If I right click again, the setting I'm talking about is Refine Edge. All right, now this image, I don't, it doesn't really need it, but it has a good example here. It has these garage doors. So let me zoom in. All right, and hold the space bar in and drag it over here. So we have these garage doors. So I wanna get the magic brush. I wanna make sure that the mask is on. All right, let's get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key. All right, now I'm going to draw across this garage door on the far left. All right, like that. And you'll see that once it calculates, it drew this edge. Now, let's change it to the grayscale mask. And you can see that the edges are very hard, very hard, like it is exact. All right, I'm going to hit the M key to turn that mask off for a moment. All right, so very hard edges. Now let's right click and let's take this refine edge far to the right. All right. Now I'm going to draw a mask on this other garage door over here. Draw a line, I should say. Let it do its thing. All right. Now it kind of looks the same, but let's go back here and go to the grayscale mask. You can see how the original one I drew when I had that refine edge very low, the edges are very hard. But when the refine edge is very high, you can see how it's more sloppy around the corners, even spread over onto the garage door next to it. So it wasn't quite as maybe precise as I would have wanted it to be for this image. But that hopefully um, uh, shows what refine edge does. Now I'm going to turn that mask off, turn that mask off. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm going to get rid of this adjustment layer. I'll hit minus. The proper way to mask out all these garage doors is to have sample entire photo and have refine edge at its lower value of eight, right? And size is fine. And I'll make sure the mask is on. I'm going to click up here, make sure always display mask. Then I'll just paint on this one garage door and it got all the garage doors. Now it did get a little bit over here. So what I could do actually is zoom out I like that it did it. It got all the garage doors. So if I wanted to do adjustment, an, an adjustment on those garage doors, I could do it pretty much exclusive of everywhere else in the image. But let's turn the grayscale mask on again. Uh, keyboard shortcut is Option M on a Mac, Alt M on a PC. All right. So I have, it's a little sloppy. It got some stuff up in here, over in here. So what I could do is get that eraser tool and just erase it where I don't want it. So I could clean up the mask. Right? So very easily, but still it saved me a lot of time than if I had to use a brush and try to mask these garage doors individually. So you could see that that is a very effective method. Now if I come in and I like take exposure down or turn exposure up, it's just affecting those garage doors. So the magic brush tool in Capture One 21 version what was the version again? 14.3. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you. Everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.